Hi, my name is Brian and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to design an aquarium sump today. My last video I diagrammed a sump system for my 350 gallon saltwater reef tank. Um, I always like to come up with my designs and then give some time to think about them. And so I want to share some of the things that I came up with this week and in particular I have a great way to deal with um, what I call my um, flow down tank. So This will be my uh, sump. Water will be fed in from this side. It will go down into a, uh, a filter sock. And originally I was going to have a deep sand bed and then a return area. One of the challenges you have to deal with in a, a sump is what happens when the pumps get turned off. In my tank, um, my, my system is somewhere in the 450 gallon range by the time you take into account the plumbing and the sump and the um, refugium that I had, had been running. So, you know, when, to borrow the phrase from the children's game, when the music stops, the water's going to go somewhere. And uh, in this case, it normally would go into your sump, so if your running water level is here, and you turn all your pumps off, think power failure, maintenance, feeding time, your water level might go up here. And you, you need to be cognizant of this and you need to think about it and um, you need to leave space for it because if I you know, have a running water level of here, which is very tempting, and I turn the power off and my water level goes up here, that means water is going to escape from my sump and it's going to go all over the place. If your tank is like most people's tank, your sump is going to be under the tank and that means you're going to have salt water in your carpet, on your floors, and um, it's a fantastic way to piss off your significant other and start a fight. So I don't recommend that. I recommend instead that you uh, plan for a power outage and um, leave some space on top of that. So, you know, the problem is acrylic is expensive. Um, my sump design is 24 inches tall, 36 inches long, and 24 inches deep. Um, just purchasing the bottom in 3 8 inch and the ends in half inch was $190. Um, I happen to have the rest of it left over as scrap from when I built my uh, my display tank. So over the week I thought well you know how can I really get the best bang for the buck out of my acrylic and keep it working for me and I have some plastic food barrels that I use for makeup water and you know other stuff and um, what I realized is hey I could recycle a, a barrel and so my plan, and I haven't figured out quite how I'm going to do this because I want to run all of my water through a filter sock, and, and that'll probably look like this, and there'll be a cutout here for the water to, to go th in through that. The, and your water path will go down, it'll come through the filter sock, and then it'll go through this, there's, there's a little wall, and if you view this from the top, what you have is something like this and this and this will be all coarse rock so if you were looking at this from the end what happens is you have and I'm going to exaggerate my cutout so you can see it in the camera your water comes in through here it goes down through a filter sock goes through this and then you've got all this rubble here and then you have a wall and so the, it filters through your rubble up and then over 
So what that over looks like is over into a refugium. Now, once it's gone through my refugium, there really isn't a whole lot else that has to happen. Um, if you remember from my last video, I, I suggested that you make a list of everything that your sump needs to accomplish so you know where to plug it in. So what I really, and I, I like to keep my sump at what I call a comfortable working level. So there'll be a platform about here. But it occurred to me that if I took a 55 gallon barrel and positioned it underneath of my sump, I could use this as my return uh, and I could also use this as a, um, a drain down. So 55 gallons is about there in one of these things and so if I ran it at about you know the 25 gallon mark I could then draw off of this to my pump And, um, you know, it's important that this be a food grade barrel and you still need to wash it. Um, I have a source for these locally in Houston for about $25 a barrel. You, you can go on Craigslist and find them. Um, you can use an open top or a closed top. Um, I, I think it makes more sense to um, probably use an open top, but, you know, this is one of these things that is... Uh, subject to the bear. It really depends on how much you expect to get into the bottom of this. So the, the, the nice thing about this is that I can position my heaters down here. Um, you know, this will always have water. It has ample capacity. Um, a barrel is uh, a more secure water container than a um, acrylic box. I mean, then that, that's relative, but the barrels are inexpensive. Um, you can't get 55 gallons of acrylic for $25. So this is very likely what I'm going to do. And this will represent a standpipe, which will come down to here. And you'll notice that I am bringing my pipe farther down in the barrel. And the reason is I don't want any splashing. So in the event of a drain down, my refugium should still hold water. This level doesn't change, which allows me to use more of, of this for refugium and less of it for um, equipment. And then I can put more equipment <clears throat> down in my 55 gallon barrel. So uh, this is actually what I'm going to implement. and. Uh, so the next video I'm going to make is going to be about uh, um, building this uh, acrylic tank. Um, one of the other tools that I'd like to mention is called Google SketchUp. Google SketchUp is a three-dimensional modeling tool. It's pretty easy to use. Um, it has its quirks like any other 3D modeling tool. Um, if you have not used uh, SketchUp, I would allow about four hours to learn to use it. Um, it's not that difficult of a tool, but it does take some getting used to. Google has some fantastic tutorials to help you learn to use it, and then once you learn to use it, you can do things like uh, modeling your tank. And actually what I'll do right now is uh, cut to Google SketchUp and show you what my tank design looks like. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened up uh, my original sump design in uh, Google SketchUp. And this is one of the things I really like about Google SketchUp is that I can um, rotate a three-dimensional model. And so here you can very clearly see the input to the sump, my box that would be for a filter sock. What you don't see in here is a, um, a holder for the filter sock. Um, and then you see a rubble area. This was the bypass concept that I had envisioned. So the bypass is still going to be necessary, but it's not going to function quite like this. Um, and uh, 
I haven't decided exactly how that's going to work, so let me go ahead and remove that. And again, this is the wonderful thing about Google SketchUp, is I can very quickly ascertain how I want... Yeah, sometimes it's harder to grab an object than it looks. Um, that's one of the drawbacks to Google SketchUp. But um, it can be done. Deleting uh, a, an object is a little more work than um, it probably ought to be. And um, in this case, that's just going to have to work. Um, it looks like it, it when I start to delete this line, it, it confuses it and starts removing the panels, and I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to leave it well enough alone. Here we have the uh, return for the UV. Well, this will go into the sump, and we have the return for the, uh, or the intake and return for the chiller. Um, this may go to the sump, this may stay here. The probes, uh, this will probably end up being moved, and there's not a nice way to move an object in, in SketchUp, or if there is, I'm not aware of it. But what I wanted to show you is just this, this modeling tool that allows you to mock up a sump and kind of think through the problems that are involved. And um, you can see here that I originally had it set for one height, and I decided to make it a little bit taller. And that's the beauty of doing this in SketchUp, is it shortens your design uh, and let me point this out. This is the flow-through portion of the of of this uh, partition, and so you can see the water will be forced to go down and and then through. So I highly recommend using something like SketchUp. The nice thing is this is a free download from Google. Um, they do offer a pro version, but you don't need it. I'm working in the. Um, and I believe this is the engineering template. Um, so yeah, I'm using the product design and word working. I'm working in inches because that's my def that's the measurement that I'm most comfortable in. There are other um, templates that you can use. Um, I recommend that you use one of these product design templates for your for your aquarium. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching my video, and I hope that this has been helpful uh, for your aquarium and sump design project. Um, my next video will show the assembly of uh, this sump. Have a great day.